calling all adventurers. Are you sick of numb hands and chattering teeth? Have you had it with your snot freezing into icicles from the sheer bloody cold of the snowy land of Skyrim? Well, come to one of the province's many fine inns or taverns, warm your ass by the fire and have a drink on us because we know that being the Dragonborn is a thankless job and you deserve a break. What's up guys, it's Scott here from Fudge Muppet. Today we have a special video for all you connoisseurs out there. We're going to tell you about every single unique alcoholic drink in Skyrim, all neatly packaged in this video. We're not going to be mentioning quest specific drinks that are just normal drinks named after a person, or your standard ales and alto wines and all that nonsense. There are 22 items in total on our list of unique drinks, so let's not hold off any longer. Enjoy the Alcoholic's Guide to Skyrim. With so many drinks to choose from such a variety of flavors on offer, the only fair way to organize this list is in alphabetical order. And with that comes some Argonian privilege. Our first beverage is the Argonian Ale. This special concoction is not quite as easy as a regular ale to get your mitts on. Brenuin, a redguard beggar in Whiterun, asks the Dragonborn to retrieve this brew, and by retrieve, I mean steal from the Bannered Mare. The name of this ale suggests it's made in Black Marsh or contains ingredients native to that land. On the topic of Argonian, we have Argonian blood wine next. This beverage was introduced in the Hearthfire DLC and it offers some interesting side effects. Aside from a hangover, the Argonian blood wine raises your poison immunity by 40% for 50 seconds and decreases your stamina regeneration by 30% for 30 seconds. But most interestingly, it will give you the power to breathe underwater for 50 seconds. I still wouldn't recommend going swimming when you're blind drunk, mind you. Considering the side effects, it would almost suggest that this blood wine is literally made from the blood of Argonians, but hey, that's none of my business. Next up, there is Ashfire Mead. This mead seems to be a catalyst between a conflict at the Thirsk Mead Hall. The Reichlings occupy the hall, while the humans, Elmus in particular, wants the place, and the mead back. If Elmus regains dominion over the hall, he'll start making this sweet beverage for sale, and he may even ask you to pick him up some juniper berries for the recipe. I guess that means that Ashfire Mead has a distinct taste of juniper. Who wants a nice, costly mead setting you back a whopping 10 septums per bottle. Well, may I introduce you to the Blackbriar family and their meadery. Here they make two drinks, Blackbriar Mead and the rarer blue bottled version, Blackbriar Reserve. The latter is more potent and more expensive. The honey used in crafting this sweet golden mead comes from the Golden Glow Estate on Lake Honrick. Say what you will about the Blackbriars and their prices, but the drink is clearly in demand. You can even find an employee of the meadery, Romlin Dreth, selling the mead for cheap. You can help him smuggle a keg of the mead out to Iverstead, or you can rat him out to Indoor the Dark Elf in charge of the Rift and based establishment. Remember those pesky flying creatures getting up in your face as you travelled Vardenfell? Well, there's a deliciously intoxicating beverage in Skyrim named after this obnoxious creature. If you find yourself in the company of Talon J, the Argonian at the Bean Barb, you may just have the chance to try his special concoction. In his words, Cliff Racer is only for the bravest of souls. It's a combination of firebrand wine, cyrodelic brandy, Flynn and Sujama. You'll most certainly be hearing Sanguine's voice in your head after a mouthful of that liquid fire. Next up, we have a staple drink of the Colovians. Hailing from the western side of Cyrodiil, we have the Colovian brandy, and this liquor is smoother than any Colovian fur helm. The Dragonborn may use this fine drink in the Thalmor Embassy, enticing Raislin into distracting the partygoers while you escape to the kitchen. Raislin is even willing to make a reference to Elenwyn's promiscuity provoking the attention of the guards just for a goblet of this sweet brandy. Must be quite good. This drink obviously ups charisma as it did for Raislin. If you consume a bottle, your bartering skill will increase by 20%. Brandy seems to be a specialty of the Imperials and the Colovians aren't the only ones who know how to distill a good vintage. Taxes and importation costs means this drink will cost you a pretty penny, but if publications in Vardenfell are anything to go by, it's well worth the investment. It is an invigorating and stimulating alcoholic beverage, is imported and expensive in Morrowind, but it is claimed to have none of the unpleasant side effects of other intoxicants. I hear it fortifies willpower and endurance. 
Ever found yourself shoving aside a Nord Mead, wanting a break from the sickly sweetness of a mouthful of alcoholic honey? Maybe you should try Dragon's Breath Mead. If the name is anything to go by, it must have quite a kick. This unique beverage can only be found once in the possession of a drunk named Horgir in Dragon's Bridge. It shares the same typical side effects of mead, increased stamina and decreased stamina regeneration, and it even shares the same appearance as regular Nord Mead. So the difference is a mystery. But if you choose to consume it before completing Horgir's and his wife Alder's quest, you may fail your task. Now we have one for the wine drinkers. Ember brand wine can only be found on the island of Solstein, where Captain Veloth, a Redoran guard, asks the Dragonborn to find a hidden stash of eight bottles in Ravenrock. These are the only eight bottles in existence, as far as we know. Remember the ingredients from Cliff Racer? Well, one of those was Firebrand wine. This unique beverage can be found in the Blue Palace of Solitude or in the Temple of the Divines. During the Thieves Guild questline, Firebrand Wine can be used to bribe the dock worker, Gullamai, into providing information on Mercer Frey's secret adversary. He could have asked the Dragonborn for a sack of gold, but instead he wanted Firebrand Wine. Sounds like quite the endorsement for this unique beverage. Now that we have a beverage that upon first glance is identical to Ember Brand Wine, only this unique alcoholic beverage is called Flynn. Similar to its lookalike, Flynn can only be found on Solstein, but it's slightly easier to come across. This drink is sold by Gelda Sadri and Garen Ineth, and can be found in Morven Manor and the Retching Netch. Flynn is an imported imperial whiskey, and during the 427th year of the Third Era in Morrowind, it was known for its power to increase strength and willpower. Honingbrew Mead is next on the list, and don't go telling the Blackbriar family if you happen to enjoy this honey treat. This fairly costly mead is brewed just outside of Whiterun in the Honingbrew Meadery. If you want to get into the effects, Honingbrew Mead is actually superior to its competitor, Blackbriar Mead, as both restore 20 points of stamina, but the Honingbrew variety is both cheaper and has a shorter stamina regeneration decrease time. If the Dragonborn sides with the cunning Maven Blackbriar, this mead can be poisoned, putting the owner Sabjorn out of business and replacing the contents of the meadery with her product. Next we have another drink hailing from Morrowind and the land of Solstheim. In Skyrim, it is called Matsy and has some interesting side effects, like the ability to resist frost and decrease magicka regeneration. Matsy is the Dunma word for beer, and an ingredient is believed to be salt rice, making Matsy a strong rice beer. In Vardenfell, the drink was named Matsy with the Z before the T. It is described as cheap, plentiful, somewhat invigorating, and a very popular brew amongst all Dark Elves from all backgrounds. Juniper Berry seems to be a common addition to Nordic meads, and Raloff reaffirms this by speaking fondly of the unique beverage which was brewed in the very same town of Helgen that you were travelling to for your execution. The only way to acquire this unique mead is by taking it from the burned down tavern in the rubble of Helgen after the opening quest. The producer Villod dies in the destruction of Helgen, so only a few bottles remain. So even though it comes in the same bottle as Nord Mead, there's no doubt this mead is unique. In an Elder Scrolls novel, The Infernal City, Colin asked for an ale in the Crown's Hammer Inn. It was strong, sweet, and had the taste of juniper. It is said that this is the Colovian Highland style, now popular throughout Western Cyrodiil. Sheehan is another drink commonly consumed by the Dunmer of Morrowind. This wine is cheap and plentiful like Matsy, only not so potent. In Skyrim, it can be found on Solstice, Time being sold by Garen Ianeth and Gelda Sadri. If you're looking for a wild night of drunken madness, there's nobody better to drink with than a pirate. Their love for booty is only trumped by their love for a good old rum, and the seafaring redguards of Stross Mackay have just the beverage for you. Stross Mackay rum somehow made its way across the sea and into the docks of solitude. The merchant Sorex Vinius asks the Dragonborn to deliver this specific rum to Fog Firebeard at the Blue Palace, and this is the only known bottle of the foreign spirit. The local Dunma liquor, Sujama, is extremely potent and indulgence results in elevated spirits and diminished mental faculties. It has a kick like a gua, very strong and just as stupid. If that doesn't sound like the perfect drink to warm your belly, then you mustn't be much of an alcoholic. Much like the other Dunmary drinks, Sujama can be bought from Gelda Sadri and Garen Ianeth. There is also a unique name Sujama called Sadri Sujama. This is of course named after the proprietor of the retching Netch, Gelda Sadri. We can't leave this one out as it seems to be his 
own recipe. That would explain why he asks you to take it out into the streets of Raven Rock to be taste tested. It offers a slight stamina boost over regular Sujama, 18 instead of 15 points. Another unique beverage brought to us by the Hearthfire DLC is the Cerulee Brothers Wine. If you've played Oblivion, you'll recognize the name for the Cerulee Brothers of Skingrad have a reputation across Cyrodiil. While it is not their best or most expensive vintage, it is well worth a try if you find yourself on the frozen plains of Skyrim. It is quite costly, but each bottle comes with a hint of nostalgia for former heroes of Kavach. Talon J, the Argonian innkeeper at the B and Barb, is known for three exotic beverages of his own creation. We've already been over the Cliff Racer, but now let's talk about his second, Velvet Lachance. This is a mixture of blackberry, honey, spiced wine, and a touch of nightshade. Perfectly safe, Talon J assures. While his comments are hardly reassuring, it does seem to be quite flavorful and have no negative effects. The final Talon J concoction is called White Gold Tower, presumably after the famous White Gold Tower of the Imperial City. This one involves heavy cream with a layer of blended mead, lavender, and a dragon's tongue on top. And that concludes our extensive list of every unique alcoholic drink in Skyrim. Hopefully you found at least one beverage suitable to wet your whistle, and please remember not to operate heavy weaponry while under the influence of these drinks. Thanks so much for watching guys, I've been Scott and I look forward to nerding out with you in the next one.